Hello everybody. Today I wanted to go over some book notes for a book that I'm reading called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. I don't want to cover book notes as I go over these books because I have a lot of ideas as I go through them versus just doing one complete book review because it's, it takes a lot of time to read one book and s summarize the notes into one summary and just outline that and do it in one book review without giving away like the whole book or anything like that. And so I wanted to just go over some notes that I have of each book as I go through them. And that way as I progress through books every day, I can just share them and then share my thoughts as well. Because I don't want to just steal the author's content either and, and just repurpose it as my own. I wanted to, I want to go over what I've read and insights that I think might be helpful. So first for The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford, I wanted to go over how I found this book. I found this book by reading another book called Emergence, which is about basically finding your path in life. And he, the author there really recommended Debbie Ford and Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And I previously read Debbie Ford's book called Spiritual Divorce, where she talks about divorce. And I'm going through divorce right now. So um, I really liked that book. It was awesome. But I noticed a lot of similarities between that book and this book. And it, it seems like Debbie Ford is really known for her shadow work. And that's what this book is about. It's about shadow work. And if you don't know about what your shadow is, a shadow in self-help terms is basically your darker side, all the darkest things about you. Like you, if you feel greedy, if you feel fat, or you think you're ugly, or you judge other people, that's our shadow. And that was really like started by this guy named Carl Jung. He's more well known for Myers Briggs, really, but he's also obviously known for a lot of psychology things. So with that, I just wanted to go over some of my notes as I've read through the book today. And one of the notes that I have that was in this book that really hit me was what you resist persists. And the notion in this book is, is like if anything that you so like we all have we all have a mask that we put on. And it's always our best mask typically that we put on unless people have some kind of social disorder and they're not able to put on a mask Then we always put our best foot forward and a lot of times when we do this we're resisting things Like if you're a nice guy all the time like I'm a nice guy or try to be a nice guy You know sometimes you're not trying you're not being aggressive or you're not saying what needs to be said And a lot another way to think about this is negative emotions if you're constantly avoiding negative emotions and thinking about them, then they'll continue to persist. So a good way to do this is just analyze your emotions. And that's what Debbie talks a lot about in this book is use your emotions as like a roadmap. Don't ignore them and don't just stuff them down because if you stuff them down, for example, if you, if you're in a job that you dislike and, and there's different aspects that you dislike about this job and you don't, own them then those negative aspects about yourself will come out in a different way through alcohol abuse or destroying relationships anger you know things like that so don't resist your negative emotions lean into them and integrate them and that's another thing too about this book that I really like is there's a lot of exercises and Debbie's really about integrating with your shadow so it's like analyze different, the parts of your shadow, but then after you've done that, integrate with it. Figure out why you're feeling these feelings. And another great thing that she talks about is, is looking to others for your shadow. So like, and, and I really identified with this because sometimes there's certain people that just irk me or I look at negatively and I judge them. And when that happens, that is a great learning point. Instead of looking at those people like you hate them or you really dislike them anymore, whether it's at work or in your everyday life, you should look at what you dislike about them and realize that's something in yourself that you're reflecting on them. Like all the positive things and all the negative things that we see in other people are actually from ourselves. That's why we're noticing them because they're in our head all the time. And that's something I really like about this book and I never really thought of before. And you'll start noticing it more in your life. As you see people, like with me, it's, it's people that, that um, make weird noises or just look weak, things like that. And, and if 
those type of things are similar to you, then, you know, with me, it's weakness. I have like a fear of weakness. So it's just analyzing that and other people. What's pissing them off? What's pissing you off about them? And then realize that that's something you have to work on in yourself. Whether it's weakness or they're sloppy or you view them as lazy. It's not really the problem. The problem is you viewing yourself that way. Another good exercise that she had is, is like view yourself with other people that you respect and ask them for advice. So if you need advice in your life and you want to ask a person, you know, maybe it's, it's somebody very important, like a former president or anything like that, like go ahead and meditate on them and ask them for the advice. She gives an example like Martin Luther King. She asked him for advice by meditating and she got some good feedback. And, and if you're not used to self-help, it might seem a little bit weird to do that, but I would recommend doing it. It will help and like ask the biggest questions in your life. Don't be afraid to ask the big questions. Don't ask simple questions. Ask the big questions in your life and do that exercise. That was something I've never really heard before, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Another note that I have is that we're often taught that it's hard work to go after our dreams. And what we're really experiencing here is ourselves getting in our own way. We're not letting ourselves pursue our own dreams and we're getting angry at ourselves for delaying them and for not actually going after them. And I've experienced that a lot. I'm not pursuing my dreams and, and getting and like procrastinating and getting lazy. And it's, it's, a, it's like two things at once. Like you're not actually doing the work and then you're getting angry at yourself. So, you know, this is, and this has to do, this could be with shadow work as well. Like there's a lot of things to understand there and integrate in order to start accomplishing your goals. And it's not waiting to be perfect. The moment's never going to come for you to be perfect. You have to start now and you, you can, it's okay to mess up. It's okay to not be perfect. And, and if you analyze the shadow part of that, like it's really going to move you forward in this part of your life. And that's really where I've been struggling with in my life is, is really dealing with the putting things off and, and thinking they'll get done. The, there's no better time to start or now. And you have to realize that it's these critical voices in your head, um, these things where it's like, you can't be this way. You have to wait till this thing is perfect. That's not right. You should start today. You're, you're perfectly fine the way you are right now. Another note that I have is not to live in your past. You're not limited by your past. Many of us and many people who read self-help, you're constantly analyzing your past and you're like, well, if, if this is what I've done in the past, this is what I'm likely to do and I shouldn't do that. But the other thing is too, you have to like break apart from that. You have to realize even though you've been acting like this in the past, there's, you can be so much better. Like you don't have to constantly worry all the time. You don't have to be a victim of trauma. You don't have to be a victim at all. You can completely break free from that and and embrace your future, but you have to like integrate these negative things. Like if you have trauma, you have to like, you have to sit there and analyze it and integrate all the bad things that happened. And along the same line, she talks about events in our lives. We aren't the events in our lives and we aren't the emotions from those events. You know, the, we interpret are the events in our life, like whether they're negative or positive. And even if something in your past is negative to you now, go back and reinterpret it. So say that it's a lesson and it's constantly viewing these things from, from as if they're a positive lesson. Look back at the biggest events of your life and the negative feedback that you've gotten from them and actually realize that it's a blessing and how you can reinterpret that in a positive way so that you can begin to basically reimagine the future. Because if you don't, if you stay the same, you're always going to get the same results. You're going to be stuck in the same spot. And you have to think about people that are changing the world, like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. If they just sat there and thought the way their parents would thought, they would have never gotten to where they are. But they sat there and blew away the possibilities. And they both had difficulties in their lives and they both pushed past it. You have to constantly be thinking about the future and think that there's more in the future for you. So those are, some of my, so those are my book notes today from the dark side of the light chasers. If you want to see more of my notes from the the book and then my eventual book review for this, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And also you'll get more of my self-help advice. Thanks for watching.